me and young Omar, or as we just newly crowned him, Omar Cito. <laughs> this is our gear dump for our backcountry New Mexico elk hunt. We're gonna do it a little bit different. We're basically gonna go through both of our setups. So him and I can see our differences, you guys can see our differences, and we'll try and figure out why, if one of us is doing something weird, we'll try and figure out why that is. But where we're gonna start is basically all apparel. So what we're hitting the trailhead with when we start hiking, all the other options we have when we're back there as far as the things that we're able to wear and why we would wear them. So that's where we're gonna start. Omar Cito, what are you starting with? Well, there's the first ever. The tool. first ever one like this, yeah. Yeah, and then you could obviously see who's got kids and who doesn't. <laughs> based on our gear. Or you can also see who wastes their time being over organized and who just stuffs and goes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to hit the trailhead with, I'll start off with the pants. The Cat Bad Jowls. Shouldn't be too much surprise. But wore these literally last weekend or last week. I think kind of still smell the death on them. <laughs> That's a good thing to have. <laughs> That's a good thing. So there's gonna and be I pants. To, I have to dig mine out. Cab Badge Isles. We can't both go green though, so I might have to bring the black ones. But uh, Cab yeah. Badge Isles, yep. this is what I'm, what I'm wearing. All right. Well, okay. you didn't start with undies. You should probably start with undies. I did what you did last time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing the Saks Quest. My go-to, that's what I'm wearing is the Saks Quest. I'm wearing the same ones. Obviously not that same pair, but the same underwear. Or we used to share, <laughs> we used to share mouth guards in high school. Because it was the cool thing to not wear them, but if a ref ever noticed, you had to have oh, one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So you just pull it from somebody else and be like, yeah, see, it's mine. It was pretty gross looking back on it, but that's disgusting. we can share undies you too. You just wash it off with the Gatorade? Yeah, just real quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Socks? Darn tough 2012s. Uh, why the 2012s? <sighs> just your... Just because. Just because is what I had. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Darn tough 2011s. I like the cushion setup in the 2011s much better for a backcountry hunt. Uh, full bottom cushion, but only cushioned on the top bridge of the foot, which is really nice. For me, I got kind of those hobbit feet like we've talked about before. So it's nice to have some padding on the top of my foot and then full bottom padding all through the heel and everything there. So that's what I go to for backcountry. Cool. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't have no legitimacy on why I chose these socks is just those are the ones you got free yeah these are the ones that are free <laughs> <laughs> what's next um I guess boots since we're still on the bottoms okay what are you, what are you doing I'm gonna do the Hanwag what are these the Makra Trek GTX um these are a flex four but when you break them in obviously you can tell this is literally a brand new pair I'm picking them up right now we're gonna go animal pony this weekend so I'm gonna pick them up and start breaking them in start hiking with them but I've worn these before and it feels more like when you get them broken in nice, they're more of a three. So it's going to be yeah. perfect for that high alpine we're going to be. Yeah. I'm doing the Hanwag Alaskas and we talked about it on a podcast that I was going back to leathers and I've just, I've blown so many synthetics out over the last couple of years. And, uh, I like the classic look of a leather. So I'm going back to them and I have been wearing these quite a bit. They are heavy, yeah, but man, they are sturdy. Like they, they're sturdy. If I was doing deer or something like that, I'd probably go with something a little lighter and more athletic to actually stock in on something in the bed. Yeah. But obviously with us calling an elk and doing all that, I'm not really concerned there. That's the first thing I noticed last week, the last week at the trailhead. Yeah. Was your boots. I was like, oh, leather boots. Going back to the leathers. So that's what I've been wearing these. I wore them on your backcountry mule deer hunt when I was helping over the weekend. Um, been wearing them a little bit before that. But anyways, that's what I'm, that's what I'm going with. And you liking them? I'm loving them. They were a little bit odd at first getting back into a leather pair but now that they're broke in and good i love them let's go let's start with the tops now tops yeah okay i'm just gonna bring one top that i'm gonna hike in this is our new merino this is the long sleeve we also have this available in like a quarter that's zip the crew neck it is the crew neck yeah. long sleeve and then we also have it available in a quarter sleeve with the hood yep um so i might go with the long sleeve i might go with the hooded version but i do definitely know that next to skin i'll have our new go hunt merino piece Next, next to skin for me, which I get made fun of all the time, but hey, man, it's my crossed bear with sensitive skin. T-shirt. T-shirt. This Not is my go-to archery T-shirt. That's the go-to. The go-to. It's what I wore Matthews. when you killed. Yeah, I so, saw it. Yep. <laughs> cool. It's my go-to. But I will wear this underneath the approach hoodie. By the way, the new approach hoodie. It's our new camo swatch. The colors are obviously a lot more green. Being in the high country in the timber, 
We've been working on this color swatch for a while, and obviously there's a lot of perks about being the founder, so I get the very first one. So this is the first one we have, and this is our new approach. So basically what I'll do is, if I sweat this out, when we get to the top, I'll put this on next to skin Let while dry. this dries. Yeah. And it, so at least I'm drying, not you know freezing cold and whatever I just sweated out. I'm obviously a big sweater. But then for the rest of the hunt, I'll have this on as a base and then this over the top. I like but that's it. how I work the hike in and sweating out a t-shirt. I'll peel that, let that dry, and just have the approach on. Headwear? Yeah, headwear. I'm an aerator guy. I'm a softy 2.0 guy, and I didn't notice that. I mean, I like the softy 2.0, obviously, but I killed my bull in this hat, and I killed my mule deer in this hat, so I think we just got to keep the luck just rolling. Got to stick with it. Not the same one, but, you know, the same style. Same style. style. Yeah. Got to stick with it. And... The aerator and the Softy 2.0s are the exact same material. They're treated the same way. The aerator just has perforated back end, a little yeah. bit more breathability that Softy 2.0 doesn't. That's the difference. And script logo compared to just the diamond. So it's essentially the same hat. There's a reason why we're both wearing them. You're not going with that new five panel hat that we have? The was No, one? I like the five panel, but yeah. I just, my head's a little too big. It makes me look funny. Yeah. Not like trail. I don't have a perfect head like trail. <laughs> yeah. If I had a perfect head like trail, that's what I'd wear. Cool. So that's pretty much all our that's clothes like on body. On body. Yep, that's our clothes on body when we hit the trailhead. I guess, should we quickly touch on our hiking gloves? I usually don't wear hiking gloves because I sweat. Okay. The last thing I want to do is sweat them out. But if I ever do, like if it is cold and I'm just trying to take the chill out of my hands while I'm grabbing trekking poles, things like yeah. that, I'll wear these mechanics gloves. And the reason why I like mechanics, they are super articulated. They fit very good. I got kind of thicker hands, so it's nice to have the articulation and the fingers and all that and the dexterity. Obviously, if mechanics wear them, working with their hands and fingertips all day, that's, that's why. So um, I'm a huge mechanics guy, and we may or may not be working on our own set of gloves. Ooh. And obviously, I like these. So a little tip for you. Well, I got the Stone Glacier Merca glove, similar to like a mechanics glove, just kind of tried and true, you know, beat through the brush. It's a little cold, but you still don't want to cook your hands with something like a Merca glove. I'm going to rock these. So I actually... You said twice. Excuse me, something like a grapple glove. Yeah, I'll rock these. See, I caught you. Okay, thank you. I caught you. But I'm, I'm probably not going to hike in these, only if it's like stormy and I just need some chill off my hands while I'm touching the metal. And Which it might be in the mornings. It might be. Because we're going to be like 11,000 foot yeah. peaks. Yeah, it might be in the mornings. Yeah, one thing we should also touch is going to be a backcountry hunt. Yeah. We didn't even tell them the days. We don't need to tell them the days. It's going to be a long time. <laughs> it's a lot of days. It's 14 days in the backcountry. It's 14, a lot of days. 14 days and it's Two like tags. a high country style hunt. So yeah. a lot of this weather is obviously styled to yeah. possibles. Yeah, and then uh, my waterproof glove is the XKG Kings glove. So if it is like spitting rain or doing any of that stuff and I need some warmth and keep those gloves dry, I move to the, the uh, Kings. I don't know what these ones are called, but they're waterproof ones. Scuba diver gloves. Scuba diver gloves, <laughs> but that's in case it's wet. Cool. And then, yeah, quickly, I touched on it briefly, but I got the Grapples. grapple fleece. Just warm. In case it's a little too much cold. Exactly. Yeah. Throw those on. Glass, okay. Oh, and I forgot, marsupial belt. This is my go-to belt. Minimal buckle, and that's why I like it. Obviously, you know, sitting down glassing all the time or, you know, having a pack riding across your belly the whole time. I like this very minimal buckle. That's why I like the marsupial belt. Same. Nothing too crazy on why I like it, but simple works. See? Watch Great it. minds. Yep. All right. So that's, that's that. Now, what's your, like, mid-layer? If we're going through apparel... What would be like your next layer over your top? My next obviously that's going to be like the first thing everyone does is the next like mid layer over top before they start messing with their bottoms. Yep. So my next layer, so like how you were saying, like you sweat and then you throw on your approach. Yeah. Mine is going to be the black rock for that. So I'll yeah. take off my merino top and I'll throw our black rock hoodie on mm -hmm. and it just keeps me perfect because usually we're going to be like sitting for quite a bit of times and then I'm yeah. cooling down, but I'm still staying warm and I'm not getting overly warm so yeah that's my layer mine is the same my mid layer is the is the go hunt black rock hoodie again a cool colorway new color swatch benefits being the founder i get the first one so nobody else has these two colors that i have but we that's, are wearing i steal them <laughs> we're wearing the same 
thing, mine just looks cooler. Actually, I really like that color. That one's cool too. You got me jealous. Yeah. So, a, yeah. Black Rock, that's, that's what I go to next. And let's do like, what's your outers on your upper body? I just have the uh, Stone Glacier, what's this one called? Um, Heliolite. Yeah, Heliolite. Yeah, got the Stone Glacier Heliolite hoodie. Um, because we kind of mentioned it earlier, but 12,000, 11,000 foot peaks, we're gonna be a high in elevation. I just kind of want another layer to stay warm and something too that potentially if we need to go chase a bull or something, I could, you know, keep this on and chase it through the brush. So that's gonna be my next layer. You got one extra layer than me. Ugh. Mine is the Grunman down. Grunman down. Stone Glacier. That's my insulation outer layer. I see you have that as well. I have it as well, but it's because, and I actually, this is where it gets a little. You have an extra, so here's the thing. I was, on your last hunt, I was proper frozen. Yeah. So I'm like kind of nervous. Cause I mean, if that's at, what were we at? 10.5 in Nevada? Yeah. And a month earlier than we're going to like 11.5 in New Mexico? Yep. I'm a little nervous. I, I'm, I might, I may add like a- This is where I might recommend- What? Something like this piece. What? It's gonna be a Grumman vest. I was thinking vest. I'm not a sleeveless guy though. No? But I was, th I was thinking vest just to get a little body insulation in case it really is that cold. Yeah, so I got the, this guy, my Grumman, and then that. my Grumman Puffy. I'm gonna have to add, vest. I'm probably, I'm gonna add a vest. That's what I'm gonna do. Cause I am, I'm a little nervous of how proper frozen I was in that storm this last weekend. And that's my thing too. It's like, I'm not huge so I, and I freeze a lot. Like. Yeah. So I'm always... You know, if I get cold, it's really hard for me to warm up. Like, yeah. I don't get cold easy, but if I ever do get to that like too low of a body temperature, it takes a lot for me to warm back up. So let's add to the list. I'm, I'm adding a vest. Do you know which one? That... Uh, Grumman? Yeah, that Grumman vest. In my opinion, the Grumman has proven to be the, warm, the warmest for the weight. Yeah. Like of everything that we've carried 100%. or used, it's the warmest for the weight. So that's what I'm going to yeah. do. I do have down bottoms, which I see you don't have. I do have them. Oh, you have them. Well, they're just in a bag. They're Look just in a bag. <laughs> um, down bottoms. These are a lifesaver in the backcountry. You know, it's like that last piece where if everything does go to shit and it is crazy weather, I mean, you, you can still warm up your bottom really well, hop in a sleeping bag. So if I had, you know, all my down on and in the sleeping bag, I could weather yeah. quite a bit of, of storms in mid-September. I've never seen someone wear those bottoms more than our cameraman Cam last year. He wore them the entire, well, he wore shorts into <laughs> yeah. the back country. That was his main, that was his main issue, but he wore them literally the entire time. And then my rain gear, which if I had to hike with my Grunman on and I was worried about like perforating or anything, I would just throw in rain gear over the top. Which is? So this is the Outdoor Research Helium. So this stuff is so light and it is very good rain gear. And yeah. It doesn't break the bank. That's why I love this rain gear because like what, with rain gear, I want to use it. You know what I mean? Like I said, just hiking through the brush if I had to keep my down dry, you never know, right? So I like being able to wear it. And if I do tear it up, I just come home and you can buy another jacket and it doesn't break yeah. the bank like some of this other stuff does. Um, and it is extremely light, which is the other reason why I love it. Cool. Mine is just the M5 rain gear. Stone Glacier. Stone Glacier. Tried can't and go, true. Yeah. Can't go wrong. It's not as light as the outdoor research, but it's you not can't, as light. Yeah. Can't go wrong. And then the one thing I do bring because I like to sleep in is a beanie. So yeah. I have same. A go hunt knitted beanie. Same. So just this to, is yeah sleep or keep my ears out of the wind, whatever's going on. But it's another one of those pieces where like if you're going into the back country, especially for 14 days, better have it. Might as well have it along with all this other like you know, survival type stuff like down pants if you ever do get stuck in a bad situation. I so got, that's, that's apparel. I got one here that I didn't cover. What is it? These are the Helio zip off bottoms. Oh Stone yeah. Glacier. Yeah. And I kind of uh, treat these as like uh, pajamas almost. It's a good idea. Cause I don't know, sometimes you get, you know, nasty and freaking just sweaty all the time. I just deal with it. You just deal with it. I'm gonna bring some, not, they're not, they're not gonna be pajamas, but like I will, I will sleep in these. And then, you know, zip them off in the mornings and throw my pants off. You're so proper. Just, just it's 14 days. You're so proper. It is 14 days. But my legs are too big. They don't fit that stuff very yeah. well, especially when I got to shove them back into like a outer pant leg. It's yeah. just my legs are too big. So I've never had a lot of luck being able to wear 
bottom zip off bottoms, anything like that. All right, so that's that's apparel, yeah? Yeah, it's everything that we're gonna potentially wear. All right, sleep system. This is gonna be a first gear check-in. So yeah. what gear are you taking to sleep? So I'll start off with my bag. Um, it's gonna be tucked in here inside an eight liter of our compression sack, which is super lightweight. Freaking love this design. I think Kevin and the team knocked out the park. Yeah, those are awesome. Yeah, um, but in here is a Stone Glacier 15 degree chill coat down bag, which is the only bag I've ever owned and used. And I could use it pretty much all throughout the early season. It is a little warm if like you're in August, like in the low country, I will say that. But you know, from September through pretty much early December, anywhere out west, this is a pretty great bag. And if I needed to, if I got super freezing cold, I could throw on my down pants, throw on my down jacket, my vest, whatever. So I love this sleeping bag, tried and true. Same. Stone Glacier 15 degree chill coot for the exact same reasons. It's plenty warm and with down bottoms and a down, down top, I can always make it warmer if I need to, like weather out a storm. But for the weight and warmth, once again, with Stone Glacier, they always seem to be the warmest for the weight. And, and that's just my opinion. But that is my go-to bag and it has been for a very long time. Pad. Pad. Are we rocking the same one? I think yours is a little different. Mine's the X Light NXT Neo Air. Mine's the Neo Air X Light, so you have a little upgraded version of mine. Mine's upgraded. Mine's Damn. better. <laughs> uh, Thermarest. These are both insulated. Obviously, when you're sleeping on backcountry ground at that kind of elevation, I, I really think you need an insulated pad. Again, my opinion. Um, but I hate sleeping cold. I hate getting out of the sleeping bag cold. It just kind of sets the morning off at a... Yeah. You're trying to get ahead when really you should be focusing on hunting and trying to find the elk. So insulated pads, both of us, and that's my go-to pad. Obviously, if we wanted to, we'd go down to like the Uber lights and all that stuff. There's so many options They're not insulated now. though. That's yeah, why I don't. I yeah. use the Uber light on like earlier hunts. Worst case scenario, I'm a little warm. That's not bad in the back country. Yeah, not at all. You, we'll take it. You, can, you can handle that. It's when you get to a point where you can't get warmer because it's so cold. So that's why the 15 degree with this and the down gear that I bring. Yeah, sick. You rocking a pillow? I am. You know why? Why? So I haven't really in the past because I hate how they squirt out all over the place, everything. But last week on your hunt, I had to use the upper part of my boot, like the, the leather, upper leather flimsy part. Yeah. I used that as my pillow and it was driving me nuts. <laughs> so I bit the bullet, I'm gonna carry a pillow. It's probably gonna squirt out on me, but I don't care. Yeah. It always ends up somewhere it's not supposed yeah. to, but it'll help you get asleep. And yeah. then, yeah, you wake up and it's nowhere to be yeah. found, but it did and its the, job, right? This is the Big Agnes, how do you pronounce that? Rapide. Rapide SL. The Rapide SL from Big Agnes. It's 1.6 ounces or something like that. It's tiny. This is just the thermo rest. rest. Yeah. Yeah. Try it Okay. Um, I What's your shelter? My shelter. <laughs> Same as last year. Okay. Um, this is the Sky Air ULT with the Nest, the Vestibule, and obviously the Sky Air ULT. So. You're gonna sleep in it the right way this time? I'm hoping so. I was practicing on this last time. Okay, but you had it inside out is what Brady noticed. So you're still not quite right. That's allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bibby all the way. This is the Outdoor Research Helium Bibby. Shit, I've been using this for like seven years now, literally. This is what I used with trail, however many years that, uh, ago that was. Yeah, That's what like I've been six. using all the way through since then. It's what I used last weekend on his uh, mule deer hunt. I'm a Bibby guy all the way through. I do bring a tarp. So this is the first year we've had it, the Go Hunt tarp. This is a new Dyneema one. Absolutely love this tarp through and through. Before this one, I used the Stone Glacier 10L or whatever it was called. Yeah. So that's what I'll be using this year is our Dyneema tarp. And I use this because I don't like to close myself into the bivy if it's like an extremely long rainstorm or if it's raining all night, things like that. I'll throw up a tarp over the top of me so I can at least have my head out still and not be so claustrophobic and being locked into a bivy because that is the downside. Now on the good nights, clear skies, I get to stargaze while I fall asleep, which I love. And then on the shitty nights, I'll put the tarp up over the top. So this is part of my sleep system. But the other thing with the tarp though, is there's so many different use cases for a tarp that we can go over on another time, but it's got a lot of different uses for it. And it's not just my sleep system. So it's kind of a jack of all trades, but I do use it if I need it to sleep. But I will say one thing, it comes with four stakes. 
And when you're in the high country like that, I highly suggest buying the extra steaks from us, six of them. They weigh literally nothing. We did an awesome job on the uh, steaks that we that we have with this, but I buy the six extras just so I can get all the the line strapped down and it's not blowing all over the place if it is 30 miles an hour. Yeah. So I do the extra, that's what I want to make note of. I do the extra uh, steaks in this. So that's sleep system. I was pretty jealous when you um, had your tarp from last year and in that rainstorm. Yeah. I mean, I had my rain gear on, but still, like, yeah. if you could avoid getting that rain gear. Yeah, it's so wet. nice, though. I'd just put it over me like a blanket. Yeah. And just waiting out a rainstorm. It's great. It's yeah. awesome. Sweet. All right. So, gear segment. I'm going to start out with this because this is ugly up here, and I'll get it off the top. But rain fly for my backpack, <laughs> sleeping in a bivy, and just being in rainstorms like in the high country. Must have. So, pack fly. Got Which one is that one? The Mystery Ranch. The 75. Okay. Yeah, mine's gonna be the initial scent, Rainfly, which might give you a hint to what pack I'm running. So that's my Rainfly. Gotta have it in the back country. Where do you wanna start? We got calls on the table that look close. Should we just do these real quick? I've got a couple different calls. Um, I really like the Phelps Mavericks, and I also am trying out the Rivian. Riven. Riven. You're not driving a new car. <laughs> And I'm driving a brand new electric car, bud. Sorry, it might be because I got some stock in there. <laughs> Not too much. But yeah, the ribbon uh, calls. I got the Rosie right here. I think I let a couple of the guys borrow my other one. So before the season starts, I'll pick up a new pack. I've got the Phelps Easy Estrus and then a Phelps, just the classic old Bugle tube. Have, it, have had it for like the last three seasons. So those are my calls. You should really do yourself a favor and get the new Go Hunt call wallet. Okay. So that's what I have. And in here is all of the ribbon calls. So this is the rosy, the, I don't know, the white one and the orange one, I can't remember the names. But they come in the pack of three from Ribbon and I love these calls. These are the best sounding calls out of the box that I've ever used Yeah, like, by far. 100%. It's crazy how good they sound just straight out of the box. Don't need to break them in, don't need to loosen up latex, like they're just ready to roll immediately. And I have those in the call wallet, so I have my three options there. Obviously they're, you know, work from cow cap calls to small bull to big bull, kind of like the range of sounds. And then I'm using the Riven wooden tube. And I, look, I know it's expensive and people say, I think it's awesome. Like if I'm being honest, I just think it's really cool. It's like a piece of art and I love it. I think it's really cool. So I'm taking the wooden Riven call or bugle tube, I should say. And someone mentioned earlier, it's like, um, you know, I, my parents never hunted, but like, you know, it'd be like the equivalent of like your grandpa passing on his like, that call yeah, or something like that exactly. that's pretty sick like this is it's this is a classic piece of art to me i yeah. think it's awesome take good care of it just something special about it and i think it's awesome so that's yeah. why i take it bo brooks is yeah. behind ribbon ribbon and, and he's a stud yeah he's a stud actually when i bought a pack of his calls he like sat me down and was like all right let's work through them yeah and it was like the best out of the box like you said if i could call literally one sixteenth of, of the way he could then we might actually have some <laughs> so that's what I have there. These are our calls. Oh, and I have the Phelps uh, Easy Sucker. And the reason why I have the Phelps Easy Sucker, it is so quiet to like real soft, quiet cow calls. So like when you're in tight and you're in thick timber and you don't want that echoey, weird sounding cow call because I'm not as good as Bo Brooks. It's just a really nice soft because you're blowing the air in instead of out. So it's a much softer tone of a cow call. And I've noticed it works really well in the thick timber. So that I always have this strapped to my vinyl harness if I just need that one last real quick soft yeah. cow call. Should we get our camp kitchen out the way? Yeah, mine's very minimal, so let's go for it. I got the handy dandy jet boil flash. Can't go wrong with this, this jet boil, I think. Got a can of butane and then obviously you know the bottom here that ignites it yeah so you only do one can of butane i'm going back i'll probably do two on our trip 14 days is 14 long. days and, and with you, coffee you cook at night too yeah i would do two if i was you okay so yeah so my two. my cook system is extremely simple because the only reason i bring this is for coffee it's literally the only reason right, it doesn't cook so i do just the pocket rocket msr uh one can of butane in a in a lighter and it all fits in the go hunt mug and this thing's got the, the little handles on it so you can actually drink it while it's piping hot it's amazing in the backcountry but like i said i only bring this for coffee that's it and it weighs 
nothing. It's worth it to me. I love having coffee in the backcountry in the morning, midday, all that stuff. So that's literally the only reason why I bring it. And that's why I go so simple with it. And one can of butane. One can. all I'm doing is making coffees. But you're just eating bars, bars all the time. Yeah. Disgusting. Talk about some of our water choices here. Yeah. Yep. Water storage, I guess. I'm gonna just rock this 32 ounce Nalgene. Is our lightweight one. And then I got a couple of just extra platypus here. This is a two liter and then there's a one liter. We should be in an area where we have a lot of water, but you know, say we stay in an area for an extended long period of time, might wanna just bring some water to camp. Yep. So yeah, just emergency situations. Yeah, so for me, I bring my one liter Nalgene. This is like my go-to. This is what I'm drinking out of all the time. And the best part is SteriPen does one liter at a, a half liter or one liter at a time. So the SteriPen, we actually ran into this last week. We brought some guys up there with us and they had the liter and the half and they mm. wanted to use the SteriPen. I mean, if you trust it, I guess you could yeah, double, dicey. you could double do it, but I'm just not willing to take that gamble. Yeah. So that's why I, I am primarily out of the one liter, but you know, you never know if you want to get into a place with, you know, away from water and you're going to stick it out there for a couple of days. So I bring the liter and a half. So I'm two and a half liters. I can make it, you know, three, three and a half days on that. If I really ration, no coffee, stuff like that. Uh, so I bring this just to haul water if needed. I'll, you know, SteriPen this, pour it in, SteriPen this, pour it in, and then SteriPen this, it's all, all good. So that's how I run that. And this is just for water storage. Yeah, but typically we're, in good water yeah but good you water. never know if you never need know to stash somewhere for a couple days yeah and not you know not have the ability and the last thing i want to do is go all that way in the back country and not have the ability to take water away from where you need to be yeah so you quickly covered on your i guess main water purification i guess i'll just do the same but i got the stary pin pro note though oh you do have the classic three so you take batteries yeah we got to get the new one so we don't, we could just recharge it I mean, I like the batteries. You do? Spring extras, yeah. I don't like the batteries. I will say though, if we're gonna go straight into water purification, my backup is drops. I do have part A, part B, Aquamira yeah. drops. These are my backup in case shit goes bad there. I don't know, drop it, break it, whatever. I have the drops as my backup. I, you know, water is a necessity, obviously, especially back there. So, you know, one is none and two is one when it comes to things like that. So I got two forms of water purification. My backups, Lorenzo's Aquamira drops. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just did that now? Yeah. Nice. But I'm, this is for me formally you asking to borrow your drops. All right, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, that's water. Cooking and water, water purification. Let's just get personals out of the way because that's exactly that, it's just personals. How do you run yours though? In just this little bag. I do kind of like a med slash electric. I just do mine straight personal. Okay. So this is like, this will ride in the top lid of my compartment. Yep. Um, and it's, it's so when I go to bed, when I wake up, it's just right there. The main purpose of that is, you know, sadly, I'm still wearing contacts. So got all my contacts in here. So, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste. So going to bed there, when I wake up straight to contact. So I want it next to me all the time. Yeah. And I only want my personals because I can't see anything until I do this. But in there, I got toothbrush, got toothpaste, got my contacts. I'm not gonna take them all out, but got my contacts. Big guy problems. Got yeah. Chafe powder, gotta have that, especially 14 days in the back country. Got uh, hand sanitizer. We've gone over this before. Brady and Trail think I'm crazy. I don't give a shit. If I'm touching my eyeballs, I want clean hands. I really don't care otherwise. But I mean, if I'm changing contacts out and changing if I'm touching my eyeballs, I want clean hands. It's a non-starter for me. So I got hand sanitizer. Don't want to be smelling like a billy goat. So every, you know, three, four days, I'll throw on a fresh little just to make myself not feel so bad about myself <laughs> when I get my sleeping bag. Got a little tiny one of those. I got earplugs. Sleep with earplugs every night. Just, you bring the tape. I'm a very light sleeper. I am not doing the mouth tape anymore <laughs> because now I just sleep with my mouth closed because I've been doing it for so long. Okay. So it's nice. Zyrtec. Got to uh, shut down the allergies as fast as possible. You never know when it's going to rear up. So I always got Zyrtec. D, that's the best one. And toothpicks. That's my, like literally that's my only personals and sunglasses. Cool. Mine, I'm also with the hand sanitizer. Yep. Because also like I, I'll do it before like I eat. 
I don't also, really give a shit about no? that. No? No. Mine's I mean, just straight eyeballs. Okay. That's all I care about. Yeah, I mean, mine's eyeballs too. I also wear contacts. So I got contacts. And then I also carry toothpicks just because I like to floss my teeth. Of course, I got toothbrush to brush my teeth. And I noticed Lorenzo's toothbrush isn't ultra light like mine. Cut in half. You're not even going to ultra light hunter if you don't cut yours in half, dog. How much does this weigh? <laughs> I don't. Probably nothing. Nothing. It just looks cool. And it's a nice handle. <laughs> I can get back there. I've not Do got, don't got spit. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Disgusting. And I have spit everywhere. It's just a nice I, toothbrush. Yeah. I, I like know. having a nice toothbrush. I've probably had this one for like three years. Might Gross. Be, might be time to... That's disgusting. I did clean it last night, so, you yeah. know. Yeah, so that's... Disgusting. That's that. And then some other personals that I have here is I also carry some baby powder just for chafing. I don't really chafe much, but... You gotta do gold bun. It's way better. Gold bun? Medicated powder. That's just baby powder. Yeah, Johnson Johnson. Not sponsored by them, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> some chapstick. It's gonna be windy. It's gonna uh, be potentially cold. Forgot that. I hate... Chapstick. Hate, hate, hate when my skin starts to get dry, especially my lips. And then with that, I bring some lotion too, just hydrating oh. lotion. You gotta get, you gotta look good on camera. You're so proper. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, this is just like my mom has instilled it on me. He's like, honey, always lotion up. I'm like, all right, mom, I'm a 27 year old male. Like, that Mexican culture just coming yeah. out. It's always lotioned up. So some lotion. And then I won't touch in right away, but it kind of works into a little bit of my med kit. I also keep a container for pills. I don't have any in here right now, but I will put in some Advil and some like Tylenol PM just to go to bed in case like there's a night where I can't really fall asleep. So yeah, it's kind of my hygiene and personal kit. Yeah, I don't carry deodorant. I would. It's a, these. This is exactly that. This is just personal to yeah. whatever makes you feel better back there for 14 days. I like just a, maybe a little bit of fresh smell on yeah. the fifth day just to change it up a little bit. What, what scent is that? Um, this is, I really don't care, but Cool Rush. <laughs> cool Rush. I'll take any scent when it's back there. Yeah. But the one thing I have forgotten that I'm learning now, which is why it's great to do these gear lists, chapstick. Chapstick. I will throw that in for sure. Not any face lotion? No. Okay. No, man, just with <laughs> the elements. All right, let's go to like your loose miscellaneous gear bag. Should we just get medkit out the way because I got it out? Yeah, mine's in here. Yeah. You could probably see by what I have here, I might be relying on a little bit of a Lorenzo's. <laughs> Me once again. Lorenzo's medkit if I yeah. if I have to. It looks like he's got a I have the core from Uncharted Co. I mean, when we did all that work with- uh, Barklow? With Barklow, it really put in perspective to me like really what's needed back there. Yeah. And this is so light and so nice. So what I did add to this was a knife, a backup knife, and part A, part B. I added that. Everything else in here is exactly the same. Quick clot, you got, you know, scalpel, scissors, tweezers, all kinds of skin care, skin cleaning, you know, uh, band-aids, all that stuff. So yeah. what's nice about these is it takes the guesswork out of it. I mean, you buy like this core uh, kit right here and the guesswork's out of it. So I have a full med kit of anything we would need back there within reason of what we could fix ourselves, obviously not having to be flighted off the mountain. Like I said, the only thing I've added is part A, part B and the extra knife. Yeah. And that was literally bar close, like add the knife, add some backup water purification. That was from him, so I added it. Mine is three band-aids, one gall. Oh, two extra more band-aids. There you go. I've got some moleskin, in case our, my feet get hot and blistered, and then some Luco tape. So that's my, my oh, and, and a pair of tweezers. Nice. So I might be a doctor. You, we could be doctors back there. <laughs> we could be. So that's, all right, that's med kits. This is my back, what I call my backup bag. So this is all the batteries that I would need. You know, range finder, backup battery to, you know, my alkaline, uh, or sorry, lithium batteries for the SteriPin because they do the best on lithium batteries so they don't blow it out. Backup headlamp, backup release. This is all my, this is my backup bag. So this is all the batteries I would need and uh, backup headlamp, backup release. Cool. Yeah, I also got an MISC gear. Um, I've got a pack here to potentially fix my sleeping pad if it ever did pop. I've got, this is where I keep my blades. So the 60 blades for my replaceable knife. In here I keep my spoon to eat. Weird. Keep my Taito knife. Still has some deer meat on there. Needs to Perfect. be cleaned and replaced. I also keep a pair, this bag here is just 
some lens wipes, lens cloth, lens pen, and then some, uh, what is this tape called again? Um, tenacious tape to repair if I tore my tent, you know, jacket, something like that, throw that on there quickly, reassess it when I get back home. I've got lighters, so one big BIC and one small BIC. I keep a backup release, some extra batteries for my stereo pin and my head. They're knife. not lithium, I see. They're not so what was the thing on lithium? They do better on lithium. They okay. don't burn out as quick. So it looks like I need to hit the store anyways, so I'll buy some <laughs> lithium batteries. I got some paracord, just in, you know, hanging up quarters or anything. Pumping out with a tarp, anything, yeah. I keep a Allen wrench here. These are for my stabilizers up front. It's not one that's on my Allen wrench toolkit. So this size is for that. And then I also keep a Sharpie for any tag signatures or, you know, leave it a note, if something happens. And then the Sharpie also has a wrap of electrical tape around it. And then a carabiner for any potential, you know, hanging up gear, hanging up food bags, that type of stuff. So now you went I went all in. You went full send, but I just did the extras back. Okay. So two goal zero battery banks. Obviously, you know, we use our phones a lot for film and digiscoping and all that, but I also have a family at home and I like to stay in contact all the time. Just, I like to be, somebody can reach me at all points of the day at all times. So I bring two flip 24s from goal zero just so I can always be charged on the inReach lighter. This is a backup lighter from the one that I have in my cook kit, Sharpie. Then I have a skillet tool. Never know when you need pliers or any of those miscellaneous tools on, a, on something like this. And then a knife. So that's what I do. The one thing that I realized that I don't have in here because I took it out was electrical tape. So I need okay. to add electrical tape. Are you gonna put it to your Sharpie or no, your I just No, I just throw it in you there. You just throw it in. Yeah. yeah. What I do like the electrical tape for is like, when you're packing out that bowl. Yeah, oh yeah. For the, yeah. yeah. I got a question for you. Yeah. How are you gonna charge your stuff in the back country? I don't. You don't? No. It's gonna be 14 days. That's like four charges a piece. That's eight charges total in 14 days. That should be plenty. What if you had a little like, hint of cellular data and you wanna go on Instagram? I will not do that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run through my electrical real quick. <laughs> I can't wait. I also have the Flip 24s. I carry two. Um, I got them marked. Lopez number one, Lopez number two, <laughs> just so I know which ones, you know, I could separate them if one's not working, I know it's number one or two. Some headlamps that I have here. That's why I just do different colors. Oh, that's smart. Um, I got just a wide assortment of charging cables, phone, headlamp. Really important are some earbuds. You know, if you're packing out a bowl or something, you need some motivation freaking earbuds and throwing some such a Jim's ear Zach Bryan or something another headlamp here so I carry two headlamps and then I also am going to be carrying a solar charger um, so I guess I'll be our neighborhood electric guy if we do need to charge some stuff See, up. that's why it's worth taking young guys into the backcountry with you I'll yep. make you carry all that stuff I'll, I'll uh, recharge Renzo's flip 24s if he needs it what I realized too is the charging cables, I haven't moved them out of this. These are my charging cables. They need to go in with my flip 24s. So there you go. There's my charging cables. Cool. What do you, so you just need it for your phone? Your phone and inReach. That's phone it. Phone and inReach, yeah. And then what's nice too is a lot of the times the cameramen carry a lot of charging stuff. So you can, a lot of banks. You could uh, usually bum some off of them. <laughs> yeah. It's always nice. And then the other thing you were going through, you said you had a carabiner in yep. there. Mm -hmm. The inReach comes with a carabiner. Mm. So I'll always just strip this one off if I ever needed it to hang meat or anything okay. like that. Yeah. It's always a go-to. The, these things come with them. So I have it strapped right here on the zipper of my final harness. And if I ever need it, I just strip that off and use it. What's in that orange bag over there? I think I have a guess of what it is. Kill kit. Kill kit as in just bags or? Kill kit. Everything I need when I kill. Okay. I just, have I just carry bags in mine. I don't... The, this, the only reason this bag comes out is if something's on the ground. Okay. So outdoor edge, um, it's a great, it's the best blade for elk, replaceable blade yeah. for elk, for, for sure. This is a big dog. That's the big dog. And then for caping, I actually have a civil wear from Jeff Rowley that makes these scalpel handles so I can put, throw on those 60 blades that are in here. I got gloves in here. I got the bags, all the uh, elk kill kit bags in here. So yeah, this is full kill kit of everything I would need if an animal hits the ground. 
Cool. That's yeah. what's in this bag. The only time this comes out, and if it's opened, is when we're celebrating. So I like taking up this bright orange bag. It means good things. Yeah, mine's um, not bright orange. It's dark green, but I don't carry knife or I don't carry knives in here. I just carry my knives in my miscellaneous. I only carry one knife. Um, it seems to work for me. So when the day comes that it doesn't work, I think I might throw in some extra knives. It'll come. It'll come. You, you need think? some extra knives. Yeah. That's the beauty about hunting with a hunting partner like Lorenzo. He's got like four knives. It'll, it'll come. <laughs> you'll, you'll need some knives. The other really good thing about a kill kit bag is I put all my knives and everything around top, flip this over. This is what I've traditionally used as a pillow. Oh yeah. yeah. That um, is a nice pillow. It is, yeah. but it wasn't quite enough on this last hunt. So then I ended up having to put my boot leather over that to oh. prop my head up more. Okay. So this time bringing a pillow to put on top of this. Cool. What else do we got on the table that we need to cover? Uh, trekking poles, new go hunt trekking poles. Used them last week. Like I've been using them for sure, but there's nothing like the test of the back country, especially a back country pack out. And that's what exactly what we did with these this last weekend with Omar's buck. Insanely impressed. I was actually more impressed after that than I have been through prototyping and building these. Awesome. So I'm going with the go hunt trekking poles. I'm also going with the go hunt trekking poles. Yeah, not much to say, but freaking killer trekking poles that we got and excited to pack out. Oh, I already packed out one animal with it. So excited to hopefully pack out some more. Some bigger ones. Yep. TP. I don't weigh my TP like uh, Brady Miller. I just go with a nice eyeballed amount that I know I'm not going to run out for 14 days. It's just, it's just as simple as that. Yeah. Just as if I have extra, great. I can wipe my face off. It's awesome. <laughs> you know, like who cares? Total peak hip quiver. Um, stocking in on bulls. I don't like shooting with a quiver anymore. I've been, I've taken it off a while ago. It's so much nicer to shoot without a quiver. All that area and space that puts weight on that side of the bow also the, becomes a giant wind sail if you are in a windy situation all those veins and arrows catching wind so total peep hip quiver and then i guess we go vinyl harness yeah. what you carry on vinyl harness i've got one more it's just the selfie hunter and like glassing pad this is nice for just getting out of the tent in the morning having to take a, the morning leak just stand on this without putting on your boots sitting down at camp so i like this pad and then i'll grab my optics you're so limber to be able to do that i know <laughs> good for you optics yes Okay, I'm gonna start with my rangefinder. Kilo 4K. This is the six by 22 millimeter. Have used it the last couple. <laughs> How far's the camera? <laughs> About like a yard or two. <laughs> Got nothing crazy to say all, other than it's stabilized. I could uh, sync my bow speed to it. Tells me what to dial for. So yeah, love this Kilo 4K. I got the Kilo 8K ABS seven by 25 millimeter. It's just the bigger version of that. It's an amazing rangefinder. This is synced up to my bow as well. Can't literally can't go wrong with that. For optics, I'm actually gonna take the these little guys here, the 10 by 30 Zulu sixes. Took them last year to New Mexico and they worked. They work. These are like if you're gonna stalk some animals, they're perfect. They're perfect. Yeah. You know, and especially running, gunning, elk hunting, they're perfect. Lorenzo I see has I got the twelves. I got, the, so I'm going back and forth on if I'm going to bring the 10s or not, but I have the 12s. This is what I've been using mostly. I mean, maybe we do get in a situation where I need to look a little further because we're going to be above timberline. So that's kind of why I'm landing on the, on the 12s. But these things, I mean, these also fit in one hand perfectly for a bow hunter. Flip the switch, stabilize, see exactly what you're looking at. Look at the trees, pick up a horn or a beam or something like that. Brady's going to be mad at me. I said horn and not antler. <laughs> and yeah, so that's, I do, I'm going to do the 12s. Cool. I was going back and forth quite a bit though. Between the 12s and 10s. Yeah. And then you were talking about your lens cleaning and all that. Yeah. Why not keep that right here? And the, they make a pouch. Because I keep something else there. So I keep my lens pen and this and all I that stuff. I keep a right release here. here. So do I. With the lens pen? Yeah. And stuff? With everything. I don't know. That's I what don't I know. know. I mean, yeah. my release is with my bow because it's where it's supposed to be for a gear list, but usually I keep it right here. So is your total peep. No, this is going to be on me. Or in my gear, this is yeah. in that bag. Okay. And when we get in the back country is when I put it on. I see. So I it see. rides in this bag. Okay. What do you got in this bag here? So inReach go to. What do you got? I got an inReach and a wind puffer to check what the see, wind I is. I do it opposite, so the inReach is always able to accept messages. And then on the inside of it, on the inside of this bag, that's where I have my windage. So when I'm getting in tight, I just open that and windage goes in and out. And then that easy sucker call 
That's what's in there. Okay. And then I actually was watching Brady's gear list the other day. Yeah. And he was telling me how he keeps the batteries for his rangefinder and binos right there with his That's in his harness. Smart. Because he was on a stock one time, and then like his rangefinder died, he had to go like he couldn't do anything. So I thought about that as I was setting up for today, and I'm actually going to do that for now on. So for any electronics here, the batteries will go in this little back pocket. And then I also just carry. I feel like that's so straightforward tool. and simple, but I don't know why I don't do that. That's I know. Very smart. I'm I literally thought that. about that yesterday. I was like, yeah. oh, wow. I'm going to do that. Yeah. So you don't really think about them going dead during a stock. Exactly. But why, it why would happen. it not? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Avoid, avoiding, um, what's that law? What's that law that's Murphy's law? Murphy's law, yeah. yeah. Got to avoid Murphy's law. So that's our optic setup. No tripods, no spotters, none of that type of stuff. So. We're gonna go light fast and hopefully get on some freaking bugling bulls. All right, packs and bows, weaponry. Weaponry. So obviously all this gear that we just lay out on the desk has to go on something. And for a 14 day trip, it's gotta be a pretty big something. Yeah. So these are our packs of choice. 14 days of food as well. That's the heaviest and biggest part yeah. to any backcountry hunt is the yeah. freaking food. And yeah. while we're on the subject of food, you're actually going down in weight this year, right? Yeah, I mean, for 14 days, yeah, I'm gonna have to go down in weight. Last year I was 2.1, 2.2 pounds a day. Yeah. I'm gonna try like hell to get down to like a pound and a half if I can, I doubt it, but that's what I'm gonna try. Yeah, I, I'm gonna try the same too. So with that, our pack choices, mine is gonna be the initial scent, 8K. Love this pack, took it to I'm not going to say the state, even though I don't <laughs> care because Beta's going to get mad at me, but took a bear hunting uh, this spring and I was able to pack out my bear meat, my bear hide, all the camp in one pack and it felt amazing. So that's kind of, kind of anticipating some heavy hikes for long miles and this is the pack that I'm going to call for the job. I got some accessories here. I got a side pouch here. Um, I carry just one side pouch. That could be for a headlamp or a release. And then just the, my Nalgene holder right here for the initial ascent. So yeah, that's my pack system. I'm taking the Mystery Ranch Metcalf 75. This is what I took last year. Before this pack came out, I took a prototype with Omar last year on our hunt. Film's out, you should go watch it, it's really good. And now I'm you know, taking the, the production part of the pack, or the production one of the packs out. Uh, but I haven't changed, I love this pack, this thing's awesome easily capable of taking the 14 days of all the gear and all the food, all that stuff. And then I only have one accessory on there, which is this hip pocket. And in there I do have a headlamp and extra batteries. That's my go-to headlamp. Always there close to me. I don't need to dig in my pack to get it. That's what stays in there. But yeah, that's the, the pack is a 75 Metcalf. Cool. Arguably one of my favorite parts of a gear list is the weaponry. It is the favorite part. That's what yeah. does the job. That's what does the job will you get the most personal with getting ready for the hunt? You sleep with your bow before the hunt? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I keep it in my room and I wake up and I'm like, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt that about you, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. If I was single, that's what I would do. Yeah. It would probably be in my bed if I was single. <laughs> what bow are you running? The Lift 33. If anybody has been following us for a while, obviously they know that this is my first time switching a bow since 2016. That's I've crazy. been shooting it for a while. I've been shooting it since October. So, I mean, I'm familiar with it for sure, but it's, it's fresh. There's no blood tracks on this, on this bow yet. So this is the first time I've switched in a very long time. I do love this bow though. The efficiency uh, in this bow, arrow speed, how yeah. it comes off the bow, it's pretty incredible. So what were you shooting at today when we just did the chrono? I was 295 today, 505 grain arrow, 295. That's fast. It's fast. For 505, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really fast. What else do you got in that bow? So you got the Lip 33. So Lip 33, I'm a 30 and a half draw. So I got the integrated front bar, back bar. I have the UltraView slider sight. I have the QAD inter integrated rest, which I think is, I mean, if you're going to have one of these bows, you kind of have to do that in integrated rest. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, so UltraView button release. So this is, I've been shooting this for a while. The only thing I've done differently to this release is put grip tape on the inside, just in case it is wet or I'm sweaty or whatever it is. I have just, you know, skateboard grip tape on the inside of all those finger handles. 
And then you have a customized... I put the Helix knob the Helix on there, knob. yeah. It's not custom. It doesn't come with that, but they do sell those, so I have the Helix knob on there. Just grips into my, into that crease of my thumb really nicely. So when I am at full draw, it just fits right there in the crease of my thumb, and it's not moving anywhere. And then you also have the Extendo here too, right? Yeah, I don't... The way Trail and other people, you guys have your pinkies off the side. I, I like the big ones. I too. don't understand that. Yeah. I got to have a place for my pinky. I, I'm I can't, way. you know, I'm not drinking wine at a fancy place. <laughs> like I want, I want my pinky in there. And then Ultraview Arrows, these 1K, these are brand new. We have been shooting them for a while, um, but they are brand new out to actually buy now. These arrows are incredible, honestly. I, you know, all of us were, we're going to be honest, a little skeptical of how can an arrow come like this that's better than the arrow I could build myself and I'm telling you it is just as good maybe people out there are better at building arrows than I am and I completely get that because I'm not that great at it but I know I can get all the components and everything to line up and spin the way I want it to if I spend enough time with the arrow but every single one out of the box has been weighted perfectly spin perfectly have hardly any wobble if any at all and they're awesome like we we put these things through the test, and this is what I'm shooting now is these Ultra View 1Ks. I do shoot a 250 spine, because I have 80 pound limbs. I'm at like 81 pounds right now, uh, at a 30 and a half draw. So they are coming out fast for how heavy they are. So I shoot the 250 spine, and then I'm shooting for the first year, which you just killed your buck with, the hybrid sever 1.5s. And you saw it die. And I, I saw some carnage. I watched it through the spot and scope. It was, it was good. Yeah. So that's, uh, this is the weapon reset up. The Ultra View 1Ks, Sever, Hybrid 1.5s, uh, Matthews Lift, Ultra View Slider Sight, Ultra View Release. And then did you touch on your tight spot quiver? Oh, tight spot quiver. That's just a five or is that? Yeah, that's a five. You okay. got to have a place to put the extra arrows, obviously. And I need, and using it to put it on my tight, my uh, total peep, hip quiver. So obviously I am bringing a quiver, it just doesn't go on my bow. So it's either gonna ride on the side of my pack when I'm hiking in, or, or, or when we are into bulls, rather. I've been talking for too long. It'll go to my hip. And then are you gonna be using the stand when you're hunting, or is that just not, to make it look cool? Not on the elk hunt, I will not be using the stand. Okay. This weekend coming up for the yeah. archery antelope hunt, yes, I will be using the stand, Okay. for sure. Cool. My bow build is pretty much the same. It actually just came this Monday. So I'm getting it all set up right now, but pretty quick, uh, A stabilizers up front. Um, this is a 12 inch with a shrewd quick disconnect. And then a uh, eight inch stabilizers in the back with a shrewd quick disconnect here. I'm also carrying the uh, Matthews Integrate Rest. From QAD. From QAD. Um, and then I got an Ultra View slider sight, the same one. Uh, I shot my bull last year with a single pin and I have sworn to myself that I will never do that again. So I'm gonna do the three pin this year. I tried and to tell you last year. I know. I, I, I tried to tell me. you the months before that hunt. I'm like, man, elk in the rut. I don't know if a single pin is the right right way to go. Well, I experienced it and I can guarantee you if you're out there and you have never killed a bull, I would highly recommend more pins. So yeah, that's my side of choice. What else do we got here? Uh, my bow's at 75 pounds, shooting these Ultraview uh, 1K arrows at 290, um, and they're at about 100, uh, 460 grains. Honestly, the reason I wanted to choose these is because I was listening to the podcast that the guys did with Chris and Colby, and I really, truly believe that these arrows are for the obsessed hunters, and I think that's exactly what I am. Yeah. I'm a person who wakes up in the morning and like I said earlier, I'm not lying when I say I probably like look at my bow and just make sure it, it didn't move anywhere and I, like go downstairs and like, you know, thinking about gear, watching YouTube videos. I'm always thinking about hunting, always thinking about ways to improve my hunting, always thinking about going hunting, I'm always thinking about archery. So I'm definitely that person who is obsessed about hunting and I'm excited to use these arrows because they are to the T engineered to get you the best perfect shot. That's exactly what I want to do when I'm at full draw behind a bull or a mule deer. That's um, actually it's actually a good point. We did do a very in-depth podcast. It's over two hours, so I'll just give you a quick clip notes. The reason why these arrows are are I don't want to just say so good, but the reason why they're so put together and why they work so well 
is this entire arrow was made to work as one thing. Or if you think about it, the arrows that I was building myself before, if I got a VAP TKO from Victory, I got Easton half outsert, uh, those titanium half outserts, I you know, fletched it with boning heat veins and found a lone view or lone peak wrap. I, I was using a bunch of different components and it took me a while to find what all worked together the best. And yeah, it takes some time and you can get an arrow to be absolutely dialed, right? But this arrow all the way through, it's four and a half millimeters, it's not five and it's not four. The wrap is made to work with the spine of the arrow. The fletchings are made to work for noise and balancing the arrow. The knock collar to the knock to the, the 75 grain uh, over collar, it all is made to work as one tool. It's not a bunch of different components all put together. And it shows when you shoot the arrow, like it definitely shows. Yeah. These are so that's the cliff notes sweet. if you don't want to listen to the two hour podcast. Good podcast, so I'd recommend it. And then with that, I'm just carrying my arrows in a tight spot uh, quiver. And then I got also the total peep hip quiver here that I keep with me and I'll throw that on. I'll like pack this on the side of my pack and then hike in. And then once we get to an area we're hunting, use that obviously when the season opens because we're going to go in a little early i'll just throw it into my pack and then for my release i also have the uv button i actually like the stainless steel one and not the aluminum one because i like to just kind of be a little bit you listen and, to trail you like the weight i mean i've I'll, I'll give trail and a lot of credit but i preferably just like the weight just naturally it wasn't really? from from trail um, yeah, i like the light one yeah but yeah and then also too what's kind of cool about our setups here is they're very similar so yeah. that's what i was going to get into at the end i think it's really important if you're going into the back country with somebody especially if if both of you have tags which is a great opportunity in itself but also aside from that is things can go wrong in the back country and if you're there you want backups right and both of our setups are so similar i could shoot his arrows he could shoot mine within reason I could shoot his bow, he could shoot mine, you're 29 and a half draw, and a half. I'm 30 and a half draw. Like You could take my rest. His, we're both shooting the same rest, the same sights, the same, yeah. a lot of the same stuff. So we can kind of rob Peter to pay Paul if we ever had to, or if worst comes to worst, we literally could just shoot each, each other's bow and not be completely overwhelmed with how new it looks or how different it is when you draw it back. Um, you know, looking through the same site, housing, looking through the same everything. So. I think it's really important to have backups yep. back there. One is none and two is one. So when it comes to the weaponry, we definitely did this on purpose to do a lot of the same stuff. I mean, he had the great benefit of just getting a new bow and setting it up. So we took advantage of making things as similar as possible in case we had to do that. Yes. And then one more thing that I want to touch on is I'm going to shoot off the riser. I've done it before. Just also listen to trail again. <laughs> I've done it. That's not for trail. I just wanted to shoot off the riser. It does feel good. It, I feel like very like disciplined on my shot when yeah. I do it. Yeah. Not that I don't with like, you know, the UV grips or the Matthews grip, but I just feel like I'm more focused. I'm I gonna, do have the ultra view grip on mine. I should have said that, but. And you have a custom, is that one customization too? Yeah. 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 But yeah, I'm gonna yeah. shoot off the riser. I got some tape, actually some tennis tape arriving today. And it's, uh, it's got little missiles on it because we're gonna be launching some. Throwing little missiles, man. Yeah, we're gonna be launching, not bombs in terms of distance, but hopefully some elk killing missiles here in the next coming week. So this is uh, the bow and I gotta get this thing. It's already shooting great out the box. Just gotta do some slight adjust adjustments, but I'm excited. There we go. That's the full rundown. The backcountry gear list for us, 14 days above Timberline in New Mexico backcountry. So hopefully the only thing we add on to this is a lot of bloody meat. So that's what we're going for. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys. Like, subscribe. Stay tuned. If you guys want to get your elk fix, make sure to watch Now It's Real, our elk hunt that we did last year. Last year. It was epic. I highly suggest you go watch it. I am a little biased, but it is a good film <laughs> because the editor did an amazing job. So yeah. shout out to Cam. Go watch that. And then, yeah, have a great season. Thanks for watching.